Grace and peace to you. It's Tuesday, April 13th, and it's still the second week of Easter. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let the people say, Alleluia. Welcome to this time of prayer. My name is Kay Huggins, and I'm the parish associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We've been praying in this fashion for a whole liturgical year, and now we've come back to the season of Easter, a time to live in the brilliance of Christ alive. With His light shining in our hearts, we continue our practice of pausing at various times throughout the day to soak in Scripture, to lift up thanks for the life that we have, and to lift up petitions on the behalf of those in need within our community. We thank you for joining us today. For your prayers, increase our service to God. If you want to know more about our practice, just read the weekly welcome that's posted under Daily Devotions on Second's webpage. But for the season of Easter, all you really need to know is the light of Christ rises, overcoming the darkness of sin and death. This week, we're focusing on Psalm 119 for our first prayer of the day. This is the longest psalm in the Bible, but also an acrostic psalm, meaning that each new stanza begins each line with a, the, a letter from the Hebrew alphabet. Today our focus is on, Psalm, on verses 49 to 72. And our refrain is, Lord, the world is full of your faithful love. Teach me your ways. Let us pray. We give you thanks, patient God that by the gift of your law, we have a sure orientation in life. Every day your commandments guide us in practical ways, and on our darkest nights, your mercy restores our trust. When our eyes are clouded by sin and disbelief, your justice calls us to return to your path. Therefore, we thank you and continually seek to live by your decrees. Amen. Lord, the world is full of your faithful love. Teach me your ways. We're continuing with Jesus' last prayer. Yesterday, the opening of this prayer focused on divine protection, and today the prayer goes deeper as Jesus prays not only for protection, but for joy, spiritual security, and holiness for his disciples as they live in, but not of, this world. I'm reading from John 17, verses 12 through 19. When I was with them, I watched over them in your name the name that you gave me, and I kept them safe. None of them were lost except the one destined for destruction, uh, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Now I'm coming to you, and I say these things while I'm in the world so that they can share completely in my joy. I gave your word to them, and the world hated them because they don't belong to this world, just as I don't belong to this world. I'm not asking that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them safe from the evil one. They don't belong to this world, just as I don't belong to this world. Make them holy in the truth, for your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I've sent them into the world. I made myself holy on their behalf so that they would be made holy in truth. The daunting challenge that every Christian faces is how to live in the world, but not of the world. 
Jesus invited his disciples to join him in seeing the world as God sees the world, as beautiful despite dangerous, with powerful love overcoming all fears, and abundant with possibility even though perceived as scarcity. All that the world holds, the good and the evil, the enduring and the passing, the matters of the hearts and the needs of everyday living, living Jesus taught was framed by God's grace, actively working justice and mercy. Yet his disciples then and now found living by his godly vision challenging. Some thought Jesus was naive, unaware of the dangers of life. Others judged him as impractical, overly generous to the weak and the poor. Many felt Jesus just didn't understand the world. But Jesus' focus was on a divine rather than a worldly perspective for living. In this prayer, Jesus clearly states the benefits of such a life, and they are three, joy, truth, and holiness. All these flow from Jesus' teachings. Now, of course, Jesus knew injustice and suffering and isolation, but greater than these, he knew joy, truth, and holiness. This is his desire for his disciples, that they overcome the world as he overcame the world. The process is simple. If they remain faithful to his words, they'll remain in relationship to him. In relationship with him, his disciples will experience God's richest blessings, abounding joy, solid truth, and a glorious holiness that just transcends all earthly pleasures. Still, we know living in the world but not of the world demands daily resolve and splashes of grace. So let us be grateful for Christ's vision among us, leading us through life and helping us daily, even praying within our prayers. Let us begin our prayers for this day, Monday, a uh, Tuesday. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life which we have received by your grace and the new life you give us in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of compassion, witness, and service. For those who make and grow the things we need. For the communities in which we live. And the abilities to serve you today. And every indication of your love at work in the world. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them, even as you have served us in Jesus Christ. Especially today, Tuesday, we pray for the church in Africa, for those who can serve soil, water, and air, for those closest to us in this community, and for friends and relatives who are far away. And today we ask for the judgment to know and do what is right. Holy God, the beauty that surrounds us brings hope into our hearts. We're grateful for every sign of spring, singing with the song of Solomon, for lo, the winter is over and past. But our gratitude is not only for spring, but for the vital vaccination program that's allowing more and more to return carefully from an isolated to a more social life. For these new beginnings, we give our thanks and praise. But even as we are on the edge of celebration, 
we remember those for whom life remains difficult. Those particularly in mourning, whether that death came recently, during the period of pandemic, or even years before. We pray your sustaining grace, especially on the family of Alice M and those mourning the deaths of beloved friends and relatives and those who are companioning others in their grief. May our prayers bring them peace. For those whose lives are limited by spiritual, physical, mental affliction and for their caregivers, we pray. For Joe C., Ruth, Victor and his son, Sandra, Bev C., Sharon L., Jim's cousin Kate, recovering from a broken hip, and Gloria's family in Sweden, her grandson Adrian, 16, feeling lost, and his parents, Nanette and Peter, with mild cases of COVID. We pray for Jeannie H. following a difficult reconstructive surgery on her nose to increase her breathing. Bless each with strength in recovery. And for families caring for one another, John, Carmen, and Gabe, Rick and Marie, Joyce and her adult children, Tina and her extended family, bring abundant blessings. Be present in the lives of all facing transitions. Lillian S., whose son is arranging for her to join his household. Nancy and Toby's son, who turned 45 this last week and is doing well in his care home in Albuquerque. For Jim's friend's sister-in-law, who had experienced an unexplained healing, and yet there's more recovery to come. And for all young adults, as they try to shape their future after a year of missed opportunities, and for all who are entering new positions, new communities, and new relationships. Give us strength and patience in times of transition. Bless us as we respond to the signs of spring and begin to re-engage in life. Help us consider the values honed during the pandemic, values that may guide us to a new future. Bless all, we look to, all who we look to for guidance, politicians and governmental leaders, spiritual leaders in the communities they serve, those in the media whose voices we hear and test. Grant that as we move into spring of transition, that we may leave behind the sorrows and losses and move forward into a future yet to be charted. Thank you for encouraging us and for setting before us good choices. We continue to offer prayers for those who engage in medical work, and we name those we love. Carla, Nicole, Cassie, Sandra, Camilla, Feliz, Tilda, Karina, Emiko, Toby, Boyd, Arthur, Melinda, Marshall. Bless them one and all. Now bind us together with one voice to pray the Jesus prayer we know. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, The Lord's name be praised. And now as you go about your day, or as you conclude your day, give thanks for the guidance that you have received, the protection, the joy, the truth, and the great insight into what a holy, godly life is. 
Keep in mind the, re the refrain from Psalm 119, 49 to 72. Lord, the world is full of your faithful love. Teach me your statutes. And as you go about the day, keep the refrain from Psalm 118 in your mind as if today is a new Easter day. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace.